it's Terry and welcome back to my channel um, it's almost the end of August and I figured I might as well do a little walkthrough and uh, it's kind of an end of summer update of sorts and I figured I would start out here it just kind of got a good rain uh, actually it started yesterday afternoon and uh, pretty much uh, rained all evening and we just had a little uh, shower uh, about half an hour ago so um, anyhow right here is my uh, very old Stamberkia that I Schomburkia I'm sorry that I've had did I say Stamberkia okay uh, Schomburkia but it's probably not even a Schomburkia but this one is undulata, and I've had this for many years. It's bloomed for me in the past, and then it got scale, and then it got burned, and so it's still recovering. And um, last year it got a spike that abor aborted, so we will see. It has one, two, and there's another new growth over there. <clears throat> Next to it is my uh, looking not so good is my Cattleya boringana, which uh, the new growths are not looking so well. I don't know, maybe it's not getting enough something. Rick, if you're out there and you can diagnose my plant, maybe it's rot because of the rain, but I don't know. was not this way a couple days ago, but... Um, these are producing the growths now that should bloom uh, in a couple months. Usually are in the fall, as is this over here, which is my Cerulea Bolingiana, which there's a sheath in there. So this bloomed last fall, and it's right on target. Um, to the right of here is a warmth tolerant Miltonia. Eh, the color is kind of fading a little bit. This is Bluntii. Did have uh, many spikes on this plant, and they all aborted. There's a couple right there. But it is a successive flowering spike. There's another one. It's actually two. But yeah, Blentia is a nice thing to have. It's uh, I don't do well with Miltoniopsis or Miltonias at all. So for me to be able to get a flower spike, much less a flower, is something else. So I'm sure that there are people out there that are better than me with these types. Um, trying to see what else. Oh, back over this way. Just noticed this this morning. This is my path Superculei that I got from Andy's Orchids. Oh, and my fans, just my humidifier. But anyway, I thought that this would be a new growth, but I'm really beginning to think that it is a um, the start of a flower spike. Kind of looks like the start of a flower spike, and that'll be the first time blooming for me. Uh, I'm just really happy with the way that this uh, dendrobium, uh, I think it's pendulum, this is the newest growth, and it's still growing. Um, let me move some of this stuff out of the way. Right in front of me right here, this is a species dendrobium, it's a Laturia. This is a convolutum. There's one spike. There's one down there. Okay, convolutum is one of the uh, Latorias that makes up one of the parents of, uh, I believe it's green hornet or uh, little green app, green little green apples, one of those. Um, let's see here. Oh, this plant, which is 
It's got a sheath right there. LBC, Carnival, Kids. That's nice. Um, this is still in sheath. Looks like it's, the sheath is opening and there's a sheath inside of the sheath. to repot this. This has been in that sphagnum for a minute and you can see the bottom is starting to get some browning down there. Probably have to put some cinnamon on it. Right in through here, this is my Selagini Usitana. Here's the tag. There's the flower spike right there. Slow, well, if I could get it, yeah, slowly developing. That's a nice thing. Um, I don't think there's anything else on that cart. Over here, just some nice growth. Um, my Little stars, Brassavola, Cassavola. All these new growths have sheaths in them. There's a sheath. Okay, let me move out of my pen. I have set up so I can keep my dog out. And right here is, uh, this is just a Nodosa, Brassavola. Very fragrant. Look at the size of these flowers. That's my finger. Really nice. Let's see what else? This is my uh, Brasavala perinea. It's a species, and look at those red, red tip roots. Roots on top of roots. And there's a nice new growth there, and there's a couple more coming down. Right here, one, two, and then there's another little baby up there. Really, I'm hoping that this, uh, or one of my stanopias would do something. I mean, there's a lot of new growths. I've been watering it a lot. Uh, the roots are filling the, the, the basket. So, I'm hoping. Hopefully, uh, you are hearing me better. I am using my plug-in. Uh, microphone today, so we'll see if my voice is more audible. Over here is has been open for a little bit. This is my BLC Copper Queen. Opened over the weekend. Uh, this big thing growing bare root and this uh, basket, this is my uh, John Benedict experiment. It's just bare root in there and the roots have attached. It's been in there for a year. And uh, the newest growth came out the bottom and out the side of the basket. There is a sheep in there. Okay, over here, this is my, uh, what is it? Sea swirls with a sheath. I believe it's sea swirls, it's the green one. Uh, what else? I know I'm gonna miss something, I know it. All right, here we go, let's move over this way. Here's another flower of my Aranthes arachnites, kind of going out a little bit, and just up above it is a bud, and this is actually a cross. This is a cross between Aranthes arachnites, 
times grandiflora. So that'll be a much bigger flower than this one. Maybe a little more green in it. Okay. I wanted to point this one out. What would you guys do? Give me some advice. I'm gonna bring this over here. This is the plant that I bought back from Italy last year in my luggage that I had shipped to me from Belgium. Anyhow, um, I repotted it into, I just put the basket into another basket because it was blooming sized. Previously bloomed, there's a spent bloom spike in here somewhere. But anyhow, it's in there. And uh, so I was careful not to disturb the roots because angricoids and gracums do not like to be repotted after they are blooming size. So as you can see, uh, in less than one year's time, there's one kiki, there's two, three, four. So I don't think the roots are suffering. So what would you guys do? And it's actually started growing from the crown again, which had initially uh, rotted. So this is my Angracum cross, Angracum Lady Lisa. Can't even read that. So I would almost say that that's a success, although it's still a dilemma what to do. Okay. Shoot, where did I have it right here? Sorry for the camera. Um, this right here, I think I did point this out in my last update. This is my Cattleya Gitata. And this is still in, got a couple sheaths. There's one on right behind it, and then there's one there. This way, see what's over here. Uh, these encyclias are still in bloom. It's the albiform of Cochleata. Um, yeah, so I guess that's pretty much good over here. Back over this way, I know. This is my Lelia Ann set, if I can get to it. And there's a spike right there. And I do believe that one of these others have a, has a sheath in it too. But those are maturing. And then there's my cat Leia. I believe it's uh, one that I got at the auction last year uh, at the Botanical Gardens in St. Louis. Uh, and it has got a sheath. Uh, I'll post a name. It is a cerulea form, and as is this one, which I believe this one is Portia cerulea. Okay, this is Portia Canizaro. Beautiful. Okay, let's go back this way. And I just know I'm forgetting something and I'm gonna kick myself. But it's okay. My brassavolas are doing really well. There's some that I'm not pointing out that uh, I'm gonna miss. But that's okay. I'll catch it next time. I'm kind of in a rush. It is time for me to go to work. And I'm doing this. Okay, let me flip this off. All right, so we're now we're in the greenhouse, and I wanted to give a shout-out to Sun Yi. She's a subscriber on my channel, and she actually lives in Chicago, the suburbs. Well, maybe she lives in the city. But at the last uh, society meeting, or Illinois Eric society meeting, I purchased this uh, uh, Phalaenopsis Marei from her. 
And, uh, well, she's, she bought it from uh, Orchids Limited. And, you know, we all know Orchids Limited from Minnesota. So plants are very healthy, and you can see the number of spikes that are in bud. So thank you, Sun Yi. Okay, down below this is recent acquisition. This is my, uh, well, there it goes. But this is my Selagene speciosa. And sorry, it's in double spike. And the lovely thing about this is it's a sequential bloomer, and there's two more balloons that are getting ready to open. Um, right over here. This is my Paphiopedilum henrianum. Really nice thing. One of my bucket list orchids. That's t t this one just opened. The other one opened mid last week. Opens more yellow in the the hood, I guess, what you would call that. And uh, then it sort of softens to a lime color really nice thing the spots on the petals the color of the, the pouch really nice small plant it's path henry Anum. okay what else down here this is my dendrobium malignophyllum it's been in spike for a little while there's some flowers. I just love this little plant. If only it had fragrance, but it doesn't need fragrance. It's just just keeps will keep producing flowers just nonstop. This little path is still going strong. This is my Ferianum crossed with uh, Magic Leopard. Um, this is um. Foxwell, what is this? Maudai. There it is. Maudai. Cross, cross, cross. Okay. So that'll be nice. That uh, got a spike last year and then it uh, aborted prior to the show. Okay, this is my grown, my uh, Epilalia Catlea. There's the name, Volcano Trick Fireball. And it's got one, there's a sheath right there. And there's one more right here. And, uh, well, this one is almost ready to burst. And these, these, this is grown in semi-water. Has been for a couple of years. I've never changed it once. Over on this side, this is my Galliandra leptoceras, looking so beautiful. This is the second round of blooms for it. And it's still in double spike with lots and lots of blooms. Hopefully it'll still be, nah, I don't think it'll still be nice for the show, for a, uh, take it to Chicago for the meeting. But yeah, we've seen it before, just love it. Can never get enough of this. And back below, behind this, is uh, just opening, it is, uh, my Dendrobium nor Tokunaga. And uh, you can see the size of the plant and the flowers that really only open after a couple of weeks. These have been like this for maybe a couple of weeks slowly opening. Very long lasting flower. And of course, this, these have been always in bloom for the last little while. This is a new little bloom that's just opening up. This is a little area con color. And there's the little blooms. Cute little thing. It's just grown in sphagnum, kept, uh, you know, watered once a week. Maybe a little bit more in the summertime. Because surprisingly, all these, uh, all this sphagnum, despite the humidity in here, they 
grow it it uh, dries out a lot faster than you would expect I mean this thing says my humidity is 92 percent but of course it just rained but high of 94 low of 90 I don't know how accurate that could be um, right here is my another Latoria this is my Dendrobium fire wings. The back is even beautiful. Look at that. All right. What else can I show you? Oh, how can I miss this? I've been waiting to show this to you forever. This right here is my Angraecum Linford White Beauty. And it has been in bloom for a while. And it is still very fragrant at night. I see, I brought it out here to film. It was in the house. And I see that something has, probably me, bumped into it. But anyway, it's still very nice after so long and still so fragrant. Okay. Um, back over this way, my balina smelling so nice with a few more buds to go. Looks like the spike is branching a little bit. Down here. Uh, this is my plan is actually over here but the spike goes all the way over here and you can see at the end of the spike there's a, bl a bud if it will focus on it and it doesn't want to but anyway that is about as big as what the flower will look like will will be um, that is the spur I believe that is unfurling at the end there and the flower is very minuscule um, kind of a glossy um, green lime, so, so kind of translucent a little bit. But that is uh, Angricum caulescens. And right to the right of it is a fairly recent acquisition. I got this in midsummer, and it was in bloom with uh, these dried flower spikes. It did have a couple flower spikes I think maybe this one but just the other day I noticed that there's another flower spike and here's a flower spike right here so this is my Stellus Argentata um, yeah that's pretty much, you know what, I did forget to show something out there, so I'm going to probably attach a short little video of a couple things that I forgot out there. Um, yeah, so these are just kind of hanging out over here. This has got a flower spike on it. Ornithoflora radicans. Another little miniature. Did have one that aborted itself last week, but this one is looking strong. Out here, this is my Athenia Majestic, and I bought this in spike, and the spike aborted, and now it produced another spike. And I've had this out here just to get the rain. I'm going to bring it back in before I go to work because I don't want it to be disturbed. Back this way is my Kajalelia. The buds on the spikes are getting a little more plumper, more of the color. So I can't wait to show that off. To you guys and 
Actually, my puffinias over here are looking pretty good. There's some new growths coming out. Finally. So, all right. So I am going to go and finish this other video. And I will see you in a minute.